Oh, we've got a situation in front of us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, no, we're going on the wrong side of the road. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. It wanted to hit the truck. This is a Tesla Model 3. So we are turning on the full self-driving beta. Okay, the car is now officially, technically sort of driving itself. Whoa, whoa. That was a really sharp turn the car just tried to make. Oh, we've got a situation in front of us. Whoa. Okay. What we just had in front of us was a UPS truck coming onto our lane. We had a guy in front of us with a cargo bike. To avoid hitting the guy on the bike, the car seemed to want to put us straight into a giant UPS truck. I would prefer not to hit a UPS truck today, so I took over. It does seem to need an interruption every couple of blocks or so. Sometimes if the car is hesitating a little bit, I have to intervene. You also have to be ready to take over at any time. Now this is challenging. Oh, oh no, we're going on the wrong side of the road. We're not trying to make this car screw up. We're not trying to have a laugh at Elon Musk's suspense. That's not the point. We're really just trying to see how it handles driving in a city. So far, it's eh, going okay. We're going down a pretty just straight, normal road. There's not a lot of pedestrians here. And when you're going down a straight road with not a lot of pedestrians, the car actually seems to be doing okay. We're doing right around the speed limit. You know, um, we're not hitting anything. The car can see cones, the car can see trucks, the car can see even pedestrians on the other side of the street. Seeing might not be totally the issue here. It's knowing what to do in challenging situations, stuff that experience teaches you. We're driving down Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn where thousands of drivers drive every day. Human drivers, that is. It's a main artery through Brooklyn, commuters, trucks, people going to their jobs. A lot of human drivers do this every day, so a car should be able to handle it just fine. Well, but we're stopping in the intersection. No, now we're going again. Hey, how about that? And no, we've got a, we've got a green light and the car hesitates. It says no right turn, but we can go straight and that's where we want to go. We want to go straight. I stand at the ready to intervene. Hopefully I can do it fast enough. Now this will be challenging. We've got a fence in front of us. Whoa, whoa. The car almost hit the fence just there. It had blocked off a turning lane, but the car was supposed to move into the next lane anyway because we're going straight and it didn't. It was pretty much headed right for those fences. So I had to take whoa, over whoa. there. This is officially not truly ready for public consumption. A lot of people have issues with this being called full self-driving. First and foremost, it's not fully self-driving. I have to sit here. If it was fully self-driving, as promised, that would let you take a nap while you're driving along. Whoa, but we just slammed on the brakes there. And now this big truck is gonna go. We're gonna see if we're gonna go around the big truck. I'm just gonna give it a little, little gas, help it. Nope, nope, nope. It wanted to hit the truck. Um, so we're gonna just use a human driver to go around the truck. I don't drive a Tesla every day. I am a little skittish, I'll fully admit that. So I am taking over more than someone who's used to how the system performs. And because of that, maybe I'm skewing things a little bit, but that is the observer effect. It's a little like teaching a teenager how to drive. And you're always watching, you're always waiting. You never know when it might try something new. And that's where the anxiety comes from. You know, it does seem to be making other drivers upset. It's the people behind us. It's the people honking. Now, I'm not saying a truly, fully autonomous car will never happen. But I think at this point, we're still years away. <laughs>